Hey everybody, my name is Chase Pipes and you're watching Chasing History, brought to you by American Digger Magazine and the Smoky Mountain Relic Room. And ah, we're back on site out in western Montana with our good buddy Eamon Yeager, Dino Digger extraordinaire, dude. Man, thanks for having us out. We're going to show you guys real quickly the process that it, it goes through from finding a bone to taking care of it, preserving it, and getting it out of the ground. Eamon, we've hit a bone. What do we got going on here? Well, so this is a mass mortality site. Okay. This is a big event layer that you know has multi, multi species in it. We don't just find isolated animals. We find multiple bones from multiple animals in here. So whatever happened in this layer was cataclysmic for yeah. the area. I mean, it, it wiped everything out. So what we got going on here is two different bones. Okay. So uh, we don't have them identified yet but they're pretty soft, you know, so they need to be glued down pretty much immediately. Okay. So um, what's our next step here? We got these two bones exposed. What what, what do we need to do right now? Do to get this hit, ready? Yeah, to get this ready. So first of all, when you expose a bone, you need to look through itty bitty little cracks running through the bone. Okay. Um, when you see those itty bitty little cracks, you gotta reinforce them with glue. Okay. Um, the glue itself penetrates through the bone and stabilizes everything inside there because it will just turn to powder if you're not careful. Now, is this for so. every dinosaur bone on every site or is it just for this site in you particular? You know, it really varies. On this site in particular, the bone is incredibly soft. It, it's leached a lot of iron mineral okay. into it. So that iron actually decomposes and breaks down the bone once it's exposed to oxygen. And it seems like this is really close to the surface. I mean, yeah. we're just, you know, three feet underground. I yeah. mean, what does the yeah. freeze thaw have on this, this kind oh, of Oh my gosh, okay. So the freeze Freeze thaw is another hazard, I guess you could say, for the bone, but it also helps us dig, so it's kind of a give take a little bit. Um, over the course of winter time, the, the rock itself will freeze, and then of course it'll thaw on a nice sunny day, so the moisture slips back into those cracks, and it freezes again and widens those cracks even further, and that can actually happen to the bone too. So, so. you've got erosion going on. It seems like within another three or four years, through due to just the natural elements, this bone would be totally destroyed. Oh yeah, it would be toast. I, See, and that's what's awesome what you guys are doing out here. I mean, you know, here we are, we've got a great, fantastic layer. You're going in, you're rescuing this stuff and getting it out before the forces of nature destroy it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Dude. It, it is kind of like a great bone rescue a little bit. That's, you know? so, ah, I yeah. like that dude's great bone rescue. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're gonna show you guys coming up how we rescue this bone. So we've gotten the bone down to a spot where it's time to hit the glue to it. So Eamon, what's the what's the importance of hitting this glue to it as we dig it? What do we what do we got going on? So man? these bones can separate into hundreds of different fractures while they're underground. Wow. The freeze thaw method that happens during winter, as well as just UVB and, and an oxygen exposure, yeah. this bone start to come apart completely. So what we have to do is rescue it from splitting apart on us and we have to hit every single little crack with the cyanoacrylate glue. So okay. so you use this 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 isn't just Elmer's off the store. No, this no, is it very is very specific glue. Yes, okay. yes, it is. Right. So this glue, the way it sets is it creates its own friction, which creates its own heat. So it sets its own heat to, you know, bond really quickly and really fast. Oh, wow. So, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, show us what we got to do to glue stuff up. So, so you said we got to hit the cracks. Yeah, you can see all these cracks right along the edge of this bone yep. here. So you get all the dirt off of there first. That's really important. You don't want to glue the dirt down to the bone. Otherwise, through prep, that's a nightmare. So that's why you got the brush. You got to brush it off yeah, first. Exactly. So okay. you can see I'm just lightly soaking these edges here with glue and letting it drip down into the bone cracks itself. Now, is this bone absorbing this glue like a sponge? You know, it really all depends on what kind of glue you use. Sometimes okay. it just it just, uh, go, it, it just spills into the cracks itself. Okay. Um, this is okay. Penetrant Stabilizer though from Paleobond. This is a very good glue, so we're gonna give Paleobond a small shout out here. Paleobond! Uh, Woo! <laughs> their, their Penetrant <laughs> Stabilizer is excellent. So this actually does go into the bone like a sponge. Okay. And then you put another glue on top of this that helps set everything okay. so it's really hard. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. All right, so now that we've hit the glue, to it and stabilize it, what's our next process? So after you hit the glue to anything that's exposed, you just keep exposing it. You gotta work this bone down to what's called a pedestal. So okay. it sits on a small little ledge and the bone kind of goes off on all sides. And then you can lightly pluck it from its pedestal okay. once it's stabilized. So that's the next step. We're just gonna dig down and create this little pedestal. Exactly. Yep, awesome, exactly. let's get to digging, dude. All right, let's do it. So these might be associative. All right, so uh, what does that mean? These two bones might actually go together somehow. Um, you know, we need to expose them. We need to figure out exactly what they are. Um, but gosh, the way that this is set up, it looks kind of like semi-skull material. What's this so, looking like? It looks like, but based on the cell structure, it's a duckbill bone. Um, but I could be wrong. You know, once we get this bone out and really identify what it is, it could be to a different species. Um, but God, if I didn't know any better, the way this is set up, it looks like it could be, um, oh, it's the back of the skull there. I can't remember the name of the bone offhand. Um, Anyway, yeah, it looks like this could be one of the bones from the back of the skull there. So we'll see. This could be interesting. This could be very interesting. So we gotta dig a little bit more. We gotta keep gluing. 
All right, so when you talk about cell structure, what are you talking about? So the cell structure on the bone is this stuff right here. That's how you can tell you have bone. It looks almost like a sponge, I guess you could say, but it is literally marrow and cell structure, just like you see in human bones and mammal bones and reptilian bones today. Oh, that's cool. So, so that has all been replaced with different minerals, different um, inorganic materials. And the difference between this cell, so this cell structure is different in different species. Yes, so and the cell structure in duckbill dinosaurs is much more compact, and most okay. herbivores have very compact bone, whereas carnivores were taking on more bird-like features, so the cell structure got much wider to like a honeycomb set cell structure style, or else the bones were completely hard. Hollow. Okay, so, so this amazing. is how you can tell the difference in the species is just mm -hmm. based on the cell structure. Sometimes, you know, like you can at least get the idea of carnivore versus herbivore. Okay. Um, we don't know exact species, but we can at least get that far. Well, and you know, and there's only what a handful of herbivores and a handful of carnivores exactly. that's been per found. Formation. Yep. Per formation, yep. so you can really narrow, narrow it down. down that way. So yep. that's how species are identified. Yes, yes it is, absolutely. That and com more complete material too. That's so, cool. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> okay, so got that one piece popped out so when you get it popped out we got to glue the reverse side um this piece right here is loose okay and so you can see a big crack running through right there yeah so i'm taking the penetrant stabilizer and i'm gluing down this crack itself to flow through that crack and get every little bit and edge to catch once more okay you can see it just soaking on into the yeah. bone so she's That's thirsty really getting in there mm -hmm. so now it's starting to cool up a little bit so that means that we're about done okay cool so. now what about these loose pieces over here so these loose pieces right here you can see there's a crack right there we'll just glue this down real quick and make okay. the, those two stay together but instead of doing what's called field prep, you know, you can really do more damage in the field than good. Okay. We'll put those in foils and we'll put them with this bone here to make sure that we know that they're associative. And then when we get home, we'll go ahead and put that back together in the lab. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. So it's really important, you guys, that every five to ten minutes or so we stop and look around and keep an eye out for grizzly bears because they're all over out here. So we got to be careful. <laughs> so what's the deal with grizzly bears out here? Uh... This area is what's known as the Grizzly Bear Superhighway. Um, it's just loaded with them. Um, they, they, like, they travel out from the eastern front of the Rockies here and out into the plains and the prairies. So we just gotta keep going around this thing and pedestaling it out, making sure to get it all cleaned up so that we can glue, glue it all down. So we're just completely going around the bone and creating a beautiful little pedestal for it to sit on. Slow, but getting there. All right, so now we've got this pedestal made. What's the next thing that, we, that we're gonna do? So the next thing after pedestal, is you wrap it up with aluminum foil. Now, okay. if for some reason the bone were to break and shift, since it's gonna be compacted in the foil, it'll still kind of hold its form. So when we really delicate re reopen it, if anything broke in transportation, we can re-glue okay. it. Okay, do we need to glue any of this top down? You know, we just ran through and put some glue on. Okay. Um, so we should be okay for now. Okay. Mostly what we have to worry about is it sticking to the bottom of the matrix here. Okay. So the bone so will sometimes just stick and rip in half. Okay. It is very soft material. Okay. So, but, so what we'll do next is we'll just take a butter knife and go underneath this, you know, as close as we possibly can and then literally just wrap it up in foil like a little jacket and then pluck it from its matrix. Okay, so, awesome. Yeah, so pretty easy process. All right, see how this bone shifts right here? Yep. That means it's getting ready to lift up off its pedestal. Okay. So we just gotta keep knocking this stuff back little by little. Okay. And start mapping out this pedestal a little bit better. We're getting there. And then we'll just pop that thing straight up, right? Yep, we'll just pop it straight up in, in a little foil, ba foil basket, is what I call it. All right, so now we've got this pedestal exposed. What are we trying to knock out here? So we have the pedestal completely exposed. It's resting right on top of the hard rock right now. Okay. Um, so you can see that there's this ever so slight movement yep. here. So what we have to be careful of is that we take a little bit of this underburden with it. So that way it protects the bone as we flip it. Okay. Otherwise it'll just strip it and take it in half. Okay. And so, and then all you're going to see when you flip the bone is just a bunch of dirt, but that's okay. The bone's in there. That dirt is protecting that bone. So, so when we get that dirt flipped up, are we going to work down to the bone from that We could. Uh, we could. You could do a little bit of field preparation is what it's called. Just yep. to expose it and try to figure out what we have okay. going on in here. So we're going to so. put aluminum foil over this top? Yep. 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 Okay. Want to hand me the box? Yep. Hand you the box. All right. Heavy so, duty, this is the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Reynolds wrap. Don't yeah. mess around with aluminum foil. You don't go cheap. Oh, 
nice big section. I like to fold them in half a little bit. Okay. Really loud. So I'm gonna wrap up the bone also gently. You don't want to crush the bone. Okay. Otherwise, you destroy it in the foil, and that's no fun. Get all up and around here. Make a nice little kind of basket around it. Nice. Alright, so now what we'll do is you'll get up underneath here ever so slightly and take that pick tool. Yep. And we'll drive this pick tool underneath here away from the bone. You see how it lifts? Now we can just gently guide it off of its pedestal. Just like this. Nice! Dude! Awesome! So you can see a little bit of the bone underneath here. Okay. So now this has to be really delicately brushed and then glued. Okay, so, so our next process is to brush and glue it and then we can identify the species. Exactly. Well, yep. let's do, I'm gonna do a little bit of field prep on it. Cool. And we'll see if we can identify what species it is and what kind of bone we got. Sounds good, let's nice. do it. Nice. Here we go. All right, so we did a little bit of field prep. We've got it out. We've glued it down. We've got the aluminum foil on it. What's our, so what do we have here? What species do we got? So more than likely, I'm still sticking with duckbill on this guy. Um, there's two big duckbills out of two medicine here um, that we find in our area. There's more in other areas, but in our area, we mainly deal with myosaur and hypacrosaurus. Okay. Um, now this really, really resembles the back section of a myosaur skull. Okay, so this is the back back part of the skull? Yeah, yeah, kind of towards the quadrates is what it's called. Um, but. You know, without really getting home and prepping this guy out, we can't know 100%, but to me, that's really what this is looking like. That's so, awesome, yeah, dude, that's it's fantastic. so cool, man. Yeah. How rare, I mean, you know, you see lots of arms and legs yeah, and stuff. You, you How see, rare is the back of the You see vertebrae and regs, I mean, ver vertebrae and regs. You see vertebrae and ribs yeah. very often because that was what was in the body the most. They, they, they had, were completely head to toe in vertebrae and there's a bunch of ribs all over the middle section, you know, but they only had one head. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now the head was composed of, you know, about a dozen different bones or so. Um, so there's quite a few in there, and the bones will sometimes separate and disarticulate and float away. Okay. So I think that's the case we have here, actually. Oh, so. nice, dude. All right, so really the last step is, is to take this back to your lab yep. and just knock it out, yep. and that's we, it. We, we take a pneumatic air abrasion tools, and we'll knock all the matrix out of this bone here, and then glue it as we go to keep it nice we can start figuring out exactly what we have. We'll clean it up by doing what's called crack fill. So we'll take a, basically a clay a clay glue putty, if that makes sense, and we'll fill in all the cracks to you know give it even more more support and more sturdiness. And then we'll paint over those cracks to fill it in, and it looks like one big nice flush clean bone. Dude, so this, this is fantastic. awesome. And see, guys, that's how you do it. There's yep. nothing stopping you from getting out and doing this. Dinosaur bones aren't rare. You just got to know where to look, and you got to get around awesome people like Eamon Yeager here to come out and find this stuff. So, Eamon, dude, thank you so much Absolutely. Thank for, you, for, for coming out and explaining all this stuff to Absolutely. you. So, you guys, be sure to check out our YouTube channel, Chasing History. Be sure to like and subscribe to it. Be sure to follow us on Facebook at Chasing History. Follow us on, on uh, Instagram at hashtag Chasing History. History, hashtag Relic Room Adventures. Uh, come in and see us inside the shop inside Smoky Mountain Knife Works. We're the Smoky Mountain Relic Room. We're sponsored by American Digger Magazine, and we are out in America digging it, dude. Absolutely. So, how do you know where you're going unless you know where you've been? It's in studying and understanding the mistakes of the past that prevent the failures of the future. We will never, ever, ever be on Twitter. There's something seriously wrong with Twitter. We won't be on it. So, history rocks! Woohoo!